On today's video, we're going to show you how to make a DIY fan filter for your laptop. Hey guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video. Now, if you are like me and own a laptop that doesn't have any fan filtering, you may find yourself in a situation of constantly having to change or clean the fans. Dust getting in your computer can also too lead to less performance and overall just a slower computer as everything is running hotter and it just isn't the best situation. So today we're going to show you how to make yourself a DIY fan filter to go in that laptop to stop all that dust from being sucked up. Now for me, I own the Dell XPS 15. We've done a whole series about modding it and putting some high performance parts in it which you can again check out right there or linked down below. But one of my biggest problems with this laptop is this lack of fan filtering. It has two fans mounted on the bottom of the computer that draw air straight through a small grill. Now in theory this small grill is enough to stop any large objects getting into the computer but over time dust and particles just get in there and it goes really badly and thus we need to make ourselves a fan filter. The amount of dust that you can see in this particular shot was only after three weeks of running the computer in classrooms and home situations. I haven't really been putting it anywhere extremely dusty, it's just sucking up a whole lot of dust and keeping in mind that's only three weeks after being cleaned so these looking pretty bad so today let's go ahead and get started in making ourselves a fan filter but first what are we gonna need to actually make this project first off the top we need to get ourselves the laptop if we don't have the laptop we need a mod then there's no point in even trying this we're also too gonna need to grab ourselves some fan filter or some type of mesh now this fan filter that I've been waving around for this whole video can be picked up on eBay you can get like a pack of five for a dollar fifty or something shipped to your door so they're relatively cheap if you want to buy them in person, you can go down to the hardware store and buy some sort of meshing that is similar to this, but usually is a little bit more expensive and you have to buy at least one square meter, or with that being said, that's what we have to buy at my local hardware store. So usually it's cheaper just to go out, buy them on eBay, they're a couple of bucks, search up computer fan filters, there's even a link down below to one, and uh, that's what we'll be running today. You also do want to make sure that the fan filter mesh isn't extremely dense. If it's too dense, the fans themselves will be struggling too much and you may end up actually killing the fans over time rather than stopping the dust from getting in there. We're also too going to need to grab ourselves some double sided tape. It's not really the best to use glue or anything inside a computer as glue will heat up when the computer is being used and sometimes will also too melt. Things like hot glue is not the best for this type of mod because it's going to be close to a heat source and hot glue does become malleable and start to even melt in some cases if near hot objects and well computers do get a bit hot so double sided tape is usually your best bet. For this video we're going to be using ourselves some Tarzan grip tape which is extremely strong and is just one of the best double sided tapes you can get but really any double sided tape should work you just fine. We're also too going to need to grab ourselves some scissors or a blade. It's best to have both on hand just in case you need it because we will be cutting up the fan filters and we will need to cut the tapes. So it's good to have both on hand in case something happens. We're also too going to need to grab ourselves a screwdriver set. Something like the iFixit toolkit is probably if not the best option for this type of mod as it comes with every single thing you need to pull apart your computer but if you're going on the cheap you can easily just grab yourself these single bits that you will need to open up your computer. Now speaking of opening up the computer we're also too going to need to grab ourselves some plastic pry tools as we don't want to damage our systems. The last thing you want to do is go ahead and using your fingers and trying to wrench open the computer rather than using proper tools. So grabbing yourself some plastic pry tools, credit cards, guitar picks even is the best way to go about this. We're also too going to need to grab ourselves some sort of knowledge base or have the skills to open up our computers. There's plenty of guides, again iFixit does offer a lot of guides for a lot of different computers or some sort of teardown guide to open up your computers as not all of them do open up the same. Some units like my laptop here today are a unibody design where the bottom cover comes off whereas some other laptops are more of a clam style where the actual top keyboard section lifts away to reveal the inside of the computer. So do check with the manufacturer and do check with some teardowns down guides on how your computer opens up so you don't really damage anything. We're also too going to need to grab ourselves a pen or pencil to go ahead and mark across anything that we do need to mark out here today. A ruler or straight edge is also too recommended to go ahead and make sure everything is cut straight. Compressed air, if you are going to be going ahead and cleaning out your computer, you can grab yourself a can like this guy, what we're using today, or an air compressor. These guys are usually a lot cheaper and just a lot better than air compressors if you don't have one already. And finally, we will need a soft surface to be doing our mod on, preferably an anti-static surface, but at least something that 
that is soft. Try not to do this on a plain desk or plain glass table because you may go ahead and actually scratch your laptop. The last thing you want to do is turn your laptop over after fixing it and then find out you've scratched the whole top of the lid. So some sort of soft surface, a towel or some sort of anti-static thing will be the best for this mod. And with that, we are ready to get started. Now, my general disclaimer with this type of mod is some laptops warranties will be voided by actually doing this because you're opening up the computer and adding something inside of it. Whereas if you put it on the outside, you're less likely to void your warranty. So do keep in mind, this may void the warranty on some computers. But nevertheless, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is shut down and unplug your laptop. Make sure nothing else is plugged in, everything is disconnected so there's no power to the system. Again. Also to make sure it is shut down and anything that is super duper important you might also to want to back up just in case you accidentally break something else in the computer instead of just fixing your fans. Once the computer shut down and everything is disconnected we're going to go ahead and start removing the covers from the actual computer. Now again our laptop is a unibody design meaning we only have to remove this bottom panel. We're going to remove all these screws around the edge which is a Torx variety and then we're going to lift up the panel on the XPS 50 and find ourselves two extra screws hidden under here. Again, if you are working on the Dell XPS 15 or Dell XPS 13, we do need to make sure we have all of the screws removed. It's also too very important to remember where you took the screws out of, as some manufacturers actually have certain screws for certain locations and you don't want to go messing them up. So for me, I usually draw a diagram on a piece of paper to remember where all the screws come from. But once we've gone ahead and done that, we can start to remove the bottom of our laptop or the panels have been under screwing. Take your plastic pry tools, guitar picks or credit cards and start to remove the edges of the computer. Some computers again like the Dell XPS 15 will have clips underneath holding the panels on so we do want to be careful and not damage those clips. Once it's been removed, the panel should just pop off like so. Again, don't use too much force and if something isn't budging, go ahead and take a look around that area as there may be a super hidden screw under there that you weren't aware of. So do make sure everything is removed before you start prying at your laptop. Once you've gotten inside the computer, what you're going to need to do is go ahead and actually disconnect the battery so you don't short anything out. If you've gotten a laptop that is like ours that have the battery built into it, you can only disconnect it once the computer is disassembled a little bit. If your battery is on the outside, it's best to remove this early in the process rather than later. Now at this point, what you need to go ahead and do is actually locate where the air is coming in. If your laptop is like ours, it's going to be a super obvious situation where the holes for the air vents are right here. But some laptops can get a little bit sneaky so do have a look around the computer to see where their air vents are coming in. Now for ours we just need to focus on this bottom panel so what we're going to do is move the computer off to the side for just a moment and focus on this panel. We're going to go ahead and take our sharpie and the bottom air vent as well as our fan filter itself and go ahead and just place the fan filter over the top of the air vent. Then what we're going to want to do is mark out each of the corners where we're going to be cutting. Now for this project I recommend leaving at at least 20 millimeters of space around the edges so we can go ahead and use our tape to tape it down. Anything more than that is also too recommended but don't just go ahead and attach the whole fan filter inside of your computer. Once we've gone ahead and measured out both sides what we then can do is just go ahead and chop it up and they're now to size. Then you can go ahead and take your double sided tape, chop out a little bit and stick them down. For this project we went ahead and made sure all the edges were sealed so that no air could actually pass through the filter on the edges where the tape were so we kind of used our tape as sort of a gasket you could say around the actual fan filter so all the air was forced through the actual filter so no dust could get around it. This shouldn't really make too much of a difference but it was just me personally wanting to make sure that all the air was going through the filter. At this point, you're just about done with this mod. If you want to go ahead and clean up the computer, you are more than welcome to now. Make sure you remove the fan to get inside of all the heat sinks, and if you are going to be using compressed air to clean the fans, make sure you hold them and don't let them spin. If you let the fans spin up whilst blowing them with compressed air, you can actually do some serious damage to your fans, which could cause them to die earlier than what they're really meant to. So if you're going to be blowing the fans, make sure you hold them down rather than let them spin. Now at this stage, you should be roughly where we are. You've gotten your fan filters mounted and you've cleaned up your computer. If you're going to be doing any other upgrades whilst you're in here, go ahead and do it, whether it's drive upgrades, RAM upgrades or really anything else inside of your laptop. But at this stage, we 
we can go ahead and reconnect our battery, for the battery is inside the computer, and put the bottom panel just on. Now we're not going to do all the screws up at this point because the old saying of whatever can go wrong will go wrong will still apply here. We don't want to do up all the screws and find out that our fan filter is contacting the fan, making a really loud noise, and then having to undo all of the screws. So for this situation, what I went ahead and did is go ahead and just put the panel on the bottom of the computer and turned it over. I opened up the lid and turned the computer on. As we can hear, there was no scraping or no clearance issues with our fan filter. If at this stage you turn it on and there is some sort of creaking noises or some sort of noises coming from the fan, shut the computer down immediately and look at a way of actually reducing the amount of distance that the fan filter takes up so it doesn't go ahead and contact the fan anymore. It's not really the best to have the fan filter contacting the fan as again, it can slow down the fan and it can do damage over time. But if you put the bottom panel back on and you've seen that everything is all good to go, chuck your screws back in and the mod is just about done at this stage. Turn the computer over power it up, make sure everything works, and you are good to go. And with that being said, it is that simple. Adding a fan filter to your computer will not only allow you to keep all the dust out, but it will keep your temperatures down and allow your computer to run cooler and better. If you are in a situation like the Dell XPS 15 where it draws air from the bottom of the computer, you may also too find this a really helpful mod. Also too, other computers that don't have the best fan filtering would also too benefit from a mod like this. Otherwise guys, that about is it for today's video. Let me know down below if you have any questions questions or comments or any problems whilst doing this and I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.